Are you ready to learn a new exciting discovery I just made using gouache paint and soft pastels? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you my new technique where I use gouache paint in combination with soft pastels on a colored pastel surface. And I'll be applying the underpainting with gouache paint. And the reason I decided to use gouache paint on a colored surface is because it's opaque, much like acrylic paint, and it will show up on a colored surface. I love this technique. I can't wait to show it to you. So come on in the studio as we create this moody Florida marsh scene. You may be wondering, what the heck is gouache? Well, pronounced very much like squash, the vegetable, it's a medium that I love. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about it. I'm gonna use this little video clip from the American Crafts YouTube channel. I think she did a great job with this. Gouache is a painting product that you use with water, much like watercolor or acrylic. And it acts very similar to watercolor, but it is is more opaque. That's why it works on the colored surface I'll be showing you. And I also love the fact that you can use gouache on any sturdy paper. You don't even have to have watercolor paper. So it's very versatile too. And it's also very travel friendly. I love that you can mix so many colors and you don't need that many colors to get started because they're mixable. I also love that you have some control over how opaque or transparent the paint will be. Opaque just means it's not see-through. But if you add more water to the gouache paint, you can see you can make it more transparent and like she says here, and opaque again. So you've got a lot of versatility. Gouache paint has something else in common with watercolor in that you can actually let the paint dry and kind of reconstitute it by adding water again. I'm gonna show to my patrons on my Patreon channel my own personal palette that I have created with my own set of gouache paints. All right, you know a little bit more about gouache paint. Let me show you the product that I'll be using. I had the Arteza company gift me quite a few products. One of them was the 60 set of gouache paints. Oh my goodness, this is a lot of colors for a mixable type of paint. You do not need this many colors, but I was very grateful to get this set. So what I did was arrange some of the colors, not this many, and I made my own little palette. You can see the little um, paper up there with all of my colors on it. And I made my own little palette from a watercolor empty palette tray. And again, if you're a patron of mine on my Patreon page, you're going to have some additional extra footage at the end of your version of this video where I tell you a little bit more about how I did this. All right, let's start painting. And here was my little test painting to make sure this worked. I put some gouache down on a piece of sanded pastel paper. It's a paper made by Art Spectrum. It's called Color Fix. And it's a green, beautiful green, mossy green color. And if I had put watercolor or say acrylic ink down on this green surface, it wouldn't have even shown up. That's because watercolor and acrylic ink are transparent. But as you already know now, because of earlier in this video, gouache paint is opaque. It means it is not transparent. So it will show up on colored surfaces. So this was my little test. I was happy with it. And now it's time to start the painting. The theme this month has been marsh paintings, and I absolutely loved this gorgeous marsh from unsplash.com. Thank you to Niles Leonhart, the photographer of this, and it actually reminded me of some of the marshes around where I live in Florida. And because there was so much green in that reference image, I chose a reddish orange color from the Art Spectrum Color Fix Warm Pack. Uh, they have these beautiful warm colors in this pack. And I think this is a fairly affordable surface. If you're wanting to get started in soft pastels and you'd like to try a sanded surface, I really like their warm pack and their cool pack. And now it's time to get started applying the gouache. As I mentioned before, I have this little palette that I've created. It was an empty watercolor palette. I added all my gouache paints and they have of course dried up because it's a long time ago that I added these to this palette. But as you've already learned, they can be reconstituted with water, just like dried watercolor paints can do the same thing. So let me show you what I mean. Here you'll see me just using some clean water and a brush to just swirl some of this water around in one of the little color cubicles, this pretty blue. And you'll see that it really does come back to life very easily. And while I'm sharing this footage of just uh, 
getting the color reactivated again. I wanted to let you know and reiterate, you do not have to have this many colors. If you want to play around with gouache painting, if you just want to, you know, experiment with gouache painting alone, you don't need this many colors because it's mixable. This is a mixable medium. I will add a product to the description of this video. I think it's a Windsor, yeah, Windsor Newton set. It's like five or seven uh, tubes of gouache paint, and you could totally get started with uh, a much more limited supply of gouache paints. And now I'll be creating my underpainting prior to adding my pastel using this gouache paint. And what I'm gonna do is make me some little puddles or some pretty big puddles of color. I don't wanna have to go and swirl around every time I wanna grab some paint. So I'm just using this brush and some water and adding little areas of color. And I decided, again, the reference image is very, very green. I've already got a nice warm color that's a complement to the green. So rather than going for greens right away, I'm gonna hold off on that and use my soft pastels for my final greens. But for this underpainting using gouache paint, I'm going to use some of these beautiful cooler colors and even cooler greens. I'm not gonna use like uh, warm mossy greens like you see or lemony yellow greens like you see in the reference image. So I've just got some cooler greens, purple, magentas, those types of colors for my underpainting. Now I wanna mention that I'm using this small brush just to make these little puddles because my um, bigger brush that I'm gonna use to paint is not gonna be able to fit in those little sections. So that's why I, I start off with a small brush here. Uh, but you'll see me move to the large brush when I start painting. When I also uh, added this uh, pretty blue, I'm gonna be using this for some of the water in the scene. I have my surface taped up to my board with artist tape, and I like that Color Fix has actually a nice white little border around the perimeter. And so when you're done with a painting, if you tape it off like I did here over that white border, you get a nice clean white border when you're done. I really love that. All right, so the brush that I used is a brush that I've actually used this in I think the past two videos. You don't have to use this brush, but a brush that's got a fairly wide, uh, fairly wide bristles. And uh, I actually even use a larger brush you'll see in a little while. So what I'm doing is I'm just using this brush with the gouache paint to apply my big shapes and values. And that's a stage called blocking in. And I love during the blocking in stage to use uh, creative color and different mediums. I think it provides some nice loose effects and I think it's just a lot of fun. And I'm speeding this up, but I, I actually think you get the idea better sometimes when I speed things up. You can kind of see the whole rather than just sitting monotonously through uh, a real slow process. All right, so I have switched to a larger brush now and I don't even remember the name of this brush. I'm gonna hold it up so that you can see it. It's, um, anybody know the name of this brush? I can't remember, but it worked really well for this. Again, this brush wouldn't have fit in my little wells of color, so that's why I had to make my little puddles. And I do prefer, uh, or I, I know I will prefer, working with wet gouache paint for this technique versus the dry. I think the wet paint is um, just a little easier to work with. I can get a, a more opaque consistency versus having to bring the dried gouache paint back to life, so to speak. And you'll notice at the end, when this dries, it actually dries lighter than you're seeing right now. And again, that's why I believe if I use the wet gouache paint, I can get a a more opaque application and it won't dry quite as light. But uh, I was super happy with this technique. And I was thinking back, I think I might have tried this a uh, hundred years ago or so. <laughs> no, probably a few years back. Um, but I never did it in this way, like an underpainting. And uh, I definitely love this medium on a colored surface. Again, you could use it on a white surface, of course, but then again, you could use watercolor on a white surface, you could use acrylic ink, but if you wanna do an underpainting on a colored surface, you're gonna need to stick to mediums like gouache or acrylic paint. You can um, thin down acrylic paint and do the same thing. You can actually thin down oil paint and do this. All right, let me talk about this process. I want you to squint your eyes as I'm doing this. Squint your eyes and look at the reference image. 
um, to the lower right. And can you see where the darks are? There's a really some a lot of darks in the upper left corner and the lower right corner. Really, there's a nice perimeter, almost like an ellipse of darks around. And then your lighter values are in the center and some middle values in there too. So that's what I'm focusing on right now. I zone out when I'm doing an underpainting and I'm just looking at values and shapes. That's it. I want to get my, I'm not even as concerned about color. I like picking a question I get all the time is how do you know what color to paint an underpainting? Well, sometimes just go for it. <laughs> you know, there's no hard and fast rule with it, but I do have my own personal favorites and, and ways that I do this. And I mentioned some of it already. I know this painting has a lot of greens in it. So I'm going to be using my pastels more for the greens. Therefore, my underpainting, I wanted to have some fun color peeking through all of this green. And I've already got the warm of the surface. And now I've got some beautiful, cool purples. But what I think of is I think of a painting in layers. And what is beneath all this green? Beneath all this green are um, deeper parts of the trees and everything. And that's going to be shadowy. Shadow colors are cooler, purples and blues. Those colors will make a great base when I go to add my greens. Now, you're going to see the dried gouache painting. You can see it dried lighter, but it still works fine. These are pastels that I'm choosing from. It's my little set. It's actually a repurposed box of soft pastels that I used. When I get done with a painting, often I'll just loosely arrange arrange them in that box by color and value and it makes a great little palette to work with and as you can see I'm still creating a cool shadowy palette of color to begin with as I start to apply soft pastels you'll notice that I don't start to add greens until very near the end I'd say the last um, quarter of the painting uh, is when I start adding my uh, my greens, especially my warm greens. I do add some cooler greens. So now I, I've gotten in a little bit of that pretty blue that I started with, and now I have a real pretty dark blue that I'm using to get some of these branches. And with the branches, I keep them very gestural and broken in places. And I'm also creating the shadows, or not the shadows, the reflections of of the branches within the water too. Reflections are just a mirror image. I'm also creating, you see some of those uh, limbs and branches that are in the water. It looks like maybe a tree has fallen over into the water. So it has kind of a darker value there. So I'm getting in some of the elements that are a bit a bit more specific. I still don't go in and paint leaves or anything like that. But when we're painting, especially if you want to do impressionistic artwork, we work big to small, big shapes. Um, you start out with like the blocking in stage. That beginning gouache painting that I did was just some value and big shapes. It's like a road map. And then you just gradually start getting your elements in as loosely as possible. And you don't get those final marks or distinctive marks till the very end of the painting and even try to be a little bit limited with detail in general because you want to save detail and high contrast and values for your focal point areas and that's why I say just keep it really loose and basic to begin with work the whole painting too. try to avoid getting bogged down in any one area so I am still getting in these blues now there is a lighter value in the distance where that water is going around that little curve it was a little bit too light so I went back to another turquoise color and again I'm not using green I'm using cool or warm blues, I should say. A warm blue is like a turquoise. A cool blue would lean more towards um, like a royal blue you think of, a navy blue, and a bit more towards periwinkle type of a color. So uh, this is a cooler blue that I'm using here. And here's what's amazing to me. This is blue in my hand, right? But notice the marks I'm making on the surface. Can you tell they look purple? Don't they look purple to you? And it's it's an illusion, basically. And the reason that's happening is because what color is the surface underneath? It's reddish, right? So what happens when you add blue and red? You get purple. And so that's why I often say, some people say you can't mix soft pastels. Well, you can't. It's not a wet medium. You can't mix it in that way. But you can create these color illusions by how you layer color. That's a perfect example, how that blue became a purple just because I put it down 
lightly, not real hard, onto a reddish colored surface. So uh, now I'm creating some more of these reflections. I want to get them kind of um, believable. Um, and if you have a problem with reflections, turn your, if you have your painting on a board, turn it sideways. Um, and then just do the mirror image to the side rather than straight down. It's a little bit easier that way. And so uh, also too with reflections, when I go to blend them in a minute, you wanna make sure you blend your reflections just straight down. If you use a little blending tool or anything, you're just gonna pull straight down. You can even use the side of your finger or hand. Um, so now I am speeding this up quite a bit. Um, this is the limited edition version of this painting tutorial. Uh, if you followed my channel for very long, you know I have a Patreon page and my patrons often get the full versions. And this painting tutorial on my Patreon page is almost all real time. I mean, I go through everything step by step. And it's only $5 a month, but not to worry. If you can't afford the $5 a month, there are hundreds of free videos still here on the Monet Cafe channel on YouTube. So uh, I do know uh, we've got... Um, subscribers here on this Monet Cafe channel. There's uh, one woman who is in Ukraine and we've messaged back and forth quite a bit. She's painting and she's learning and she's just a beautiful soul. And so I know there are people in places and in circumstances that it's, it's $5 is even something that could be difficult. So that's why I love having the free content. But if you want a little bit more and you want to join a group of very fun artists and it's just a great community, I get to see your work. All the artists kind of communicate with each other. It's really cool. So I'll let you know how to do that. Aha, and you can see I have started adding green. This is my first green here that's kind of a little bit more of a mossy green. I'm getting it into some of the shadowy areas of the trees and the leaves and groupings of leaves that are beneath that canopy of trees. And I've gone a little lighter now with a lighter green. Also too, while I was jabbering, um, I put in a darker kind of evergreen green into the foreground trees there. Um, if you go back a little bit, you can see where I did that. And that served as a nice darker uh, cooler green before adding these light greens. But you can see it's already starting to come together. And now I'm finally starting to add some of my lightest greens. And this scene was just so beautiful how the sun was kind of uh, peeking around like to, from the left side um, just into those trees and onto that water and uh, just creating beautiful light and uh, warmth in those distant trees and bushes. And so I think now you should be able to see this really starting to take shape. And it all started with a gouache underpainting. And I often get the question too, is why do you do an underpainting if you cover it all up? Well, actually I keep my strokes pretty light and there is still an influence of that underpainting peeking through um, in little areas. So I loved using that pretty cool green there. Now also too, uh, your sh reflections will have some of the same color that's above the surface too. So make sure you pull some of those colors down into the water as well. And that really makes it come to life, I think. And now I'm really gonna speed up this last little bit of the painting. You'll definitely see it taking shape. And I'll share with you once again that if you want the full version, you can uh, become a patron of mine for only $5. And you can cancel it anytime, by the way. It's not like some kind of a annual contract or anything like that. So here comes the light. Look at all this reflection and light peeking through here. And this does totally remind me of many marsh scenes in Florida. I uh, My whole family's from the mountains of North Carolina, but I've lived in Florida most of my life, and so I'm very familiar with these beautiful marsh scenes, and uh, these are very much like my scenes near some of the rivers around us. And the whole time I was getting the heebie-jeebies while painting this because I'm, I've got a pretty big snake phobia, and these look kind of like the marshes where I would be maybe canoeing with family or friends and be a little bit nervous about some snakes falling out of trees, things like that. And of course, there's alligators too. You gotta be careful you know canoeing around in Florida marsh areas. <laughs> 
And now let me show you the final. I'm gonna show you my pastels. I used a few more pastels than these, but not many. This was a very limited palette because I had put down all of those beautiful underpainting colors with gouache and I had that pretty red surface to begin with. But here you can see that nice white border I was talking about when I pulled my tape off. And this was very impressionistic and loose. I really liked it. And I really liked creating the underpainting with gouache paint on a colored surface. I'll definitely be using that technique again. Please let me know if you learned something. If you haven't subscribed, I hope you will. And consider becoming a patron and be part of my Patreon family. All right, as always, God bless and happy painting.